when your career spans decades, like Molly's has, you, you go through all of these various phases, and Molly's gone through them too. You know, all artists do. She's gone through her acid house phase. She's gone through her glam phase. Uh, there was a disco phase. Uh, although we don't really talk about the disco phase because of the Olivia Newton-John incident, um, it's not suitable necessarily for a family type of program. I'll never forget where I was when I heard the news. And where was that? I'd rather not say. Her career really fell apart. I mean, she was reduced to wandering the streets of Bangkok playing ukulele for bread. Uh, Murray Head felt so bad for her that he actually wrote a song about it. Well, the first time I saw Molly, was it was very memorable, as it probably was for just about anybody who uh, saw her as a young performer. She was just this fantastic talent, this phenomenon that it was obvious that she had something special and she was going to go far. I think the first time was um, when she was in Branson and working on the Bald Knobbers show, you know, those guys who can contort their faces and do uh, cracker humor. And, and she fit right in. She, she'd dress in a penguin costume and do this plate spinning act. And she was really good. I mean, this was a few years ago. She was like five. And uh, she could get 11 plates spinning at once. And uh, the crowd would just go nuts for her. And she did it to the music of Tico Tico, you know. And the finale, which just drove the house mad, she'd, she'd start hurling the plates right at people, trying to hit them on the head. And sometimes she'd catch somebody in the throat and knock them over, and they'd just love that. And then, then to top it all off, she'd come out and bow and then take a big old oily penguin dump right in the middle of the stage. It, it was really a phenomenon. And... I knew right then that a major talent was being born. A couple of months after we started corresponding, uh, she sent us a CD of some songs that she had put together. And we were impressed with the, uh, the volume of output. But we were a little taken aback because she had written 20 songs about butter pecan ice cream. 20 songs about ice cream. One flavor, butter pecan. Uh, and we tried to gingerly inquire uh, why she might have gone that narrow uh, on a scope of songwriting. And the interesting thing was she's allergic to butter pecan ice cream. Uh, so I think she was trying to work out some sort of psychological thing there or something. Uh, we, we managed to persuade her not to release them because the other problem was the words butter pecan ice cream, f*** you, were the only lyrics for every song. And there's, we love Molly, but there's only so much you can hear of a ukulele and someone singing butter pecan ice cream, f*** you, butter pecan ice cream, f*** you. Um, I guess it just, the didn't seem like the, the project was going to have a lot of shelf life, if you know what I mean. Uh, so we suggested, actually, that she do an uh, 18 to 25 minute song about pirates. Still haven't heard back from her on that one. 